Free Radicals is a seriously dramatically asymmetrical game in which players control factions that play very very differently from one another and basically each player is playing their own mini game with some elements to be resolved in a common area, some elements based on a shared pool of resources or actions but again, mostly each player is playing their own thing and they're playing sequentially. I do my own mini game and then you do your own mini game and so on and so forth. Asymmetrical gameplay is something that I usually like very much. I mean, war games do that. I don't want the two armies to play exactly the same. I want a war game to reproduce whatever disparities were there in history. And then we have games like Villainous, for example, that have brought the joy of non-symmetrical gameplay to larger audiences. So Free Radicals is part of this of this trend and it, and it brings asymmetry again to a considerable degree of intensity. Each player will have a board such as this one where they resolve their main actions. There are uh, pools of components for each faction and I carefully bagged all the components for each faction so I can retrieve them easily. As you can see some factions have a lot of stuff that then you have to further sort out as you as you play. Other factions like the Paladins have like a small deck of cards and five tokens. So not all factions are equally demanding. Also with ten factions you have a lot of possibilities of mixing and matching but not infinite. Well not as many as you think when you hear ten because the boards for each for the factions are double-sided. So for example you have here you have the couriers and on the other side you have the entertainers, you have the hoteliers and the merchants. So you're never gonna have the hoteliers and the merchants in the same game for example. Still quite a lot of mixing and matching available there. Let's start by looking at the common elements and the general concepts that apply to every faction and then I'll give you a quick overview of, of each faction, each has its own player aid uh, explaining for example unique setup and then of course how you perform the actions. But again, some actions are general, it is just that different factions will trigger them by doing different things. And ultimately, if you're wondering, the, the, the point of the game is to score victory points. It will trigger actions to collect resources uh, that also include money, spend resources, collect the victory points during the game, and then at the end of the game you will have some final scoring with some extra points to be gained. And, and, that, and that's it, that's how you determine the winner. The game will last 12 rounds and then again final scoring and then you're ready to, uh, to see who the winner is. The, the board, the share board as you can see is pretty long and it looks, it just looks very busy. Uh, it's not, again, colorful and eye-catching but a little too busy for my taste. Here you have an area where you're gonna have four data cards available and it feels like the board should also have a space for the deck itself, maybe even a space for the discard pile, but that's not the case. So we have data cards that have symbols here and these cards can be used by different factions to perform very, 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 very different things. Important, each faction has a symbol and again, that will be triggered, activated in a myriad of ways. All these data cards, however, can also be used to awaken the buildings. The buildings that you can awaken, in other games we call that building the building, but the buildings that you can awaken here um, are printed on the board and to awaken a building you need to play a card indicating the building, say I'm awakening the bazaar or the casino or the neon church or the hollow castle a card with the building you want to awaken and your own symbol, the symbol of your own faction. So say to build the bazaar, it may not be okay to have a card with the bazaar, I, I also need the one with my symbol. On top of that, when you play that card, you need to discard the corresponding resources, so the cost is printed here in the bottom left corner of each data card. And then, as a reward, you collect victory points and you awaken the building, meaning you get to place one of your cubes, of your favorite cubes, there. That means that you have control of that building. A player may control a building twice. As you can see, there are two slots 
on each building or it can be that another player awakens the building a second time in which case it is shared once a building is awakened so it has at least one control token on it then anybody including other players can use it and to use it basically you give favor to other players that is you give them those favor cubes so that are a very important currency in the game you're giving those favorite cubes uh, to use their building, they also collect resources, but ultimately then you get to use the action of the building. And say here, for example, you could collect two favorite tokens, here I get to train one, to trade one material for three materials, so turn two carbon, two carbon into four victory points, uh, yeah, there are three building materials, carbon, uh, hydrogen, and titanium. And so that's, uh, that's it. That's for the general idea of how you awaken a building and how you use a building. Then you're going to have game effects uh, that, will, um, that will increase knowledge. And so you'll go up on this track collecting rewards uh, and ultimately setting up things that may give you victory points at the end at the end of the game and that's what that I would say is pretty much for for the general thing the things that you really can share are activating those buildings uh, using those buildings collecting data cards and advancing knowledge now when it comes to what the factions do um, basically each faction has its own mini game and very often they are versions of games that you have already played and you already know and it's just that instead of playing that game for itself now you're playing it to be able to awaken buildings use buildings collect coins collect titanium and stuff like that oh, uh, take control of the privilege token which gives you a victory point when you collect it and two, if you, if you trigger the action of collecting the token when you already have it. Which means if you find a way of just seriously, serially collecting the prestige token, that's a major machine to generate points. So, mini games uh, or games that have been turned into game mechanics. That's what's happening here. Mancala used to be a game and now we know that in many games it has become a mechanic in a larger game. Mancala is uh, the main idea behind the executives, and that's how you again that that's it. That's the idea. The, the, each faction having a mini game to collect resources and trigger actions. The farmers, uh, domino. That's a domino style uh, kind of gameplay that you have here. The artisans are collecting sets of matching cards, or say cards with matching symbols to trigger actions on the board. The underground, they play cards from their board to activate uh, character abilities, and they can upgrade the kind of abilities that they that they receive. The hoteliers, they're playing a polyomino style game, so they're playing patchwork, they're playing one of the ma these many other games. Uh, when you pl plays those styles in those areas, uh, they get to uh, trigger actions and collect stuff right away, but they get a bonus when you fill up, when they fill up an entire area. The merchants, uh, you have a token that will be on top of one of these columns every turn and then you can activate actions in that column with extra activations by placing your stance there. The entertainers, it's card driven, you play cards uh, from your hand to uh, trigger actions, as simple as that. One card is left at the end of each play, you place it here in one of these two stages and you're trying to form sets to get extra bonuses. The couriers, one of the most involved ones because it's pick up and delivery and that's how you trigger things. The paladins, uh, demanding one, they're stuck on a two turn loop in which in one turn you will place your tokens, activating actions, and the following turn you remove tokens, activating those actions, but not all, depending if the token is a knight or a squire, the squires don't trigger actions when they are removed. So place, remove, place, remove, meaning what you do on an odd turn 
influences what you have available on an even turn. As the game goes, uh, the squires become knights, so that means that also on even turns you're going to be able to do more. But again, you got to plan carefully. And then the adventurers, they have a whole quest mini games. You form like a fantasy land or a cyberpunk land of, of, of face down tiles, which you explore with your characters, but one character is a scout, uh, and is, is in that scouting place, that indicates how many actions you have available, and they may change, and the other characters will explore the land, and their abilities, you can even see here, that you can really benefit from only if you have a certain character, so only the druid can trigger that action, for example, only the cleric can trigger the action of that tile, it's those are good bonuses, but depending on where they are, you may not have the right character available. So there's a lot of planning, responding to chaos that goes into that. So a lot going on because there are many factions, uh, and while each faction, you know, presents its own mini game, which is not, you know, quite as um, exciting as, as a full game, but that was not the general idea, right? The general idea was that it was just. A mechanic, we're just a mechanic, we're just part of a larger game. So, how does it all work? How does it all fit together? And does it all fit together? The game is in essence multiplayer solo, but it has a problem. It kind of gets the worst of both worlds, in my opinion. Uh, because, well, if I'm playing multiplayer, oh, it's okay, uh, there may be some dead time, I have to wait for you to take your turn, and then the other player, and so on and so forth. But there's interaction, there's something going on. Here, I have to wait for other players to take their turn before I can play my own multiplayer, my, my own solitaire game, which is precisely what it is. Um, and so there's, there's that, but then as a solitaire, again, as if I'm playing a solitaire game, the good thing is, it's my own pace, I can go as often as I want, I take my turn, the AI does something, then I take my other turn, I don't have to wait for other people to take their turn. And some of these factions do require a little bit of thinking, uh, because, uh, uh, because although the games are not very deep, they can be unforgiving. Uh, if you set up a wrong action, if you get a synergy wrong, you may find yourself out of the loop. And so you're still going to spend some time thinking and thinking and thinking. And there's nothing interesting in watching other people thinking about their turn and I even feel guilty when it's my turn and I'm trying to figure out how to make a certain faction work and I feel guilty and I make a suboptimal a suboptimal move. So I wish that the game uh, basically was true multiplayer solo meaning with no shared uh, uh, pool of resources or actions. I, I wonder how it would be if I just, I play my game, mini game, you play your mini game, and at the end we see who scores. At least you don't have all this dead time uh, in between turns, um, but the game as is, you cannot play simultaneously. You cannot have everybody uh, taking their turn at the same time, because ultimately, yes, somebody may take control of that, uh, of that thing, and somebody may buy that card, and so on and so forth. And somebody awakens the second slot of the building that I wanted to awake, for which I was planning, now I have to replan my turn. So even the idea, well, plan your turn while other people are doing their turns, um, doesn't fully work. So it really is a weird hybrid there that, that has the slow element uh, or the pace of a multiplayer game without any of the interaction and without really not much of, of the fun that you have from the interaction. And the mini games, uh, as you play them, at least in my experience, as I play them, I just felt like, well, I could be playing Patchwork right now instead of playing a version of Patchwork uh, on this board here and worrying about all of those other things. I could be playing a quest game. I could be playing a pickup and delivery. I could be playing another man game based on Mancala or maybe even Mancala. So these games, these mini games, I, I honestly, I, sometimes I wonder what was the the idea behind. Um, Asymmetrical gameplay can be great, but here you're repurposing older games, uh, giving a framework that is slower and more cumbersome than, than the original game. 
So I like the idea of taking an old game and making it into a mechanic or something different, but it doesn't look like here was really integrated. It does feel like a collection of mini games that are usually less interesting to play than the original, and also the pace is completely different because I have to wait for other people to play their turns. It surprises me since it's basically multiplayer solo that they don't have a proper solo engine. I think this could be done and actually this could be an interesting fix. It should be possible to create an AI that represents not the I don't want to play the move the moves of a merchant or hotelier when I'm not playing them, but an AI that represents the, the effect of other people playing their turn because actually all that you're gonna experience is that they buy some cards, they move some knowledge cubes, they score some points, and you could have an AI that does that, and then you take your turn, and then draw a card with the AI that changes things a little bit on the common board, and then you take your turn. Then I think it could be interesting if you have a true a collection of solitaire mini games. It definitely would be better because you have then you have the solitaire without the dead time, without the fear of analysis paralysis. Uh, so, as is, uh, it's not a game that I personally enjoy particularly because of these problems. If it's a game that when I'm playing it, I feel like I want to play other games that this game reminds me of, then it's not a great experience. And this is my assessment of Free Radicals. I wish it was a collection of true uh, mini solitaires, but as this, this idea of... Um, dramatically asymmetrical multiplayer solo for me it just doesn't work